Today at At Home with Miss Joan, look here what a great bounty of harvest preacher brought, keeps bringing in from his garden. I've already done a video on how we put our squash in the freezer that's good for frying and it tastes like, like it's right out of the garden fried. I've already done a video on showing you how I cooked my fried squash out of the freezer. Well today I'm going to do a little different. I'm going to show you how I put up my squash, can it for frying not canning it for casseroles or anything that'd be mushy. This is a little bit more firm and I'm going to show you how I can it up for frying. Now, first I want to say the, let me look up the proper word on that. The National Center for Home Food Preservation. This is not one of their approved recipes. I'm going back now to maybe how our grandparents would have done things before they had uh, deep freezers and stuff. And so this is how I do it for canning up some squash to fry. Okay, canning it to fry, okay? And at the end of this video, I'm gonna open up a can and show you how to fry it, okay? That's my goal. But anyway, these have already been washed in like a vinegar water to kill off anything that might be on them I couldn't see. Now, all I'm gonna do is sit here and, and uh, slice them in circles. Let me pick up one, about that thick right there. A fourth, fourth maybe, a little less. I don't never really measure it. This is the same way if I was gonna put it in a skillet and fry it, uh, you know, right now. But instead, oh yeah, and I'm going to water bath can this. So we'll talk about that too, because I'm gonna make some kind of a little, uh, I don't know if you call it a brine or whatever, but I'm gonna make a special liquid that I'm gonna pour over these. So anyway, I'll just sit here and keep cutting these off and I'll get back with you when I get them all ready. Got my squash all cut up. Remember I told you we were going to make, I don't know if you call it a brine, we are going to make a hot liquid to pour over these. Well, I'm going to, since I'm just making a pint batch of eight pints, I'm going to make just a half a recipe of this. So you can double it, triple it, whatever you want to do. But right now in this pot, I've got nine cups of water that I've turned the stove on and I want it to get hot. Nine cups of water. To that, I'm going to add a half a cup of uh, sugar. To that, I'm going to add a half a cup of vinegar, okay? All right, that right there, I'm just going to bring it to a boil and cut it off. And that's the liquid that I'm going to put over my squash in the jars. Again, I repeat, nine cups of water, a half a cup of vinegar, and a half a cup of sugar. And also on the vinegar, just look at your vinegar, see, here's mine, and make sure that it's 90, I mean, excuse me, 5% acidity. Did I say that right? <laughs> My tongue can get twisted more than anybody you've ever seen. All right, so I got it getting hot right here beside it. I did think of this after I finished cutting up my squash. You know, you've ever had those little squash and they're just a little bit too little. Well, just start them on the slant. If you'll start cutting them on the slant, see how much bigger that is? If you want a bigger circle. See my other circles that I'm going to put in the jar. So I got this little bitty in. So I'm cutting him on the slant, which makes him almost as big as that round one that I started with out earlier. See? You can put your pan of water on the stove to get your jars good and purified, you know. I done mine in the dishwasher today. Got on real hot water and run a cycle through them and cleaned them up really good. There's already clean, but I'm making sure they're super clean, okay? Now I'm just going to pack my squash in my jars it's like stacking them up. I'm gonna just do a few for you and then I'll finish them on out so it won't be on the hold up your time all day long. But anyway, just kind of stack them up in there. Remember Pringles, <laughs> potato chips in the can? That to me, that's kind of how they do. And I might could get one to go in there sideways, see? All right, I'm gonna bring it up. Y'all heard me talk about this little rim right here, which is about one inch. I'm bring them up that high. Now, the other day when I done this, I measured it and I think I got, well, you know, preacher squash and everybody's is different sizes when they come in, but the large squash, this pint jar will only hold about one and a half. So if you had the little small squash like I showed you right there at the end, you might get two for a jar. I don't know. Depends on the size of your squash, okay? But I'm just stacking them in here. Oh, this is amazing how good it is. It really is. All righty. I want to make sure this comes to a good bowl. 
And the reason I'm stirring it, I'm stirring up the sugar. And because you know how sugar is. That's mostly what we want to do is get the sugar to melt real good. Now, I will tell you, <laughs> this does not taste like vinegar when you go to cook them. Well, I'll explain that when we go to actually show you how to cook them, but it don't taste like vinegar. That's surprisingly, I know, but it doesn't. Well, you'll rinse all that off, see, the way I'm going to show you how to cook it. But anyway, I've got these three ready to go. When I think this right here is hot enough and melted my sugar. I love to use this because it belonged to my mama and my grandma. All right, now I'm going to put, because it's a pint, I'm going to put a half a teaspoon of salt. And that is salt with no, no iodine in it, okay? I done set this up here before I put my salt. All right, see? That's what I'm going to do. Now, that's a rolling boil right there, a boil. So I'm going to start filling my jar, and it'll dissolve the salt down through it. Don't y'all let me forget to debubble. That's the easiest thing to forget is to stick that little stick down in there and uh, not get out your air bubbles. If you, I don't know if you can see it, but the, the bubbles is coming up to the top right there. Now I've got some that I think Maybe I got this one overfilled, so I'm going to take one out. Okay? You just got to play with it. You'll get a feel for it if you're going to try this. See, that made my water go down there when I got out all them bubbles. You don't want that. Full air. You see it in the camera? Yeah, there we go. See them coming up? I'm going to put just a tad water in this one, in this one, and him. Pull out another one. I just really crammed him full, didn't I? I need to get me a paper towel, or you could use a clean cloth, whatever you got. And I always dip in vinegar. Because see, I put salt down in here. If that salt gets around the rim of this, it might keep it from sealing. And we certainly don't want that. I'm just going to go around it, changing my paper towel every time. In case I picked up salt from one jar, <laughs> move it to the next. Don't want to do that either. Okay. I've got my rims, my seals, mama, everybody calls them something different. Flats, I've heard them called flats. Okay. When I get this done, I'm going to stop the camera and do the rest of them. You won't have to do all of them with me. It's funny. Some of you don't want me to stop the camera. You want me to keep it going and get every bit of it. Some of you don't like to spend much time. You want to get the process and move on. But anyway, finger tight. Whoops. These are new lids and seals. Bands. Rings. All kind of names. I need to pick one one day to stay with it. Okay. That's what I'm going to do to the rest of them, okay? Right now, You'll see this deep pot over here that I'm going to put them in. We're going to water bath can these, okay? Here we go with the eight pints. I use the wide mouth jars because I can get my squash out easier without, you know, they look better when they come out. So I like the wide mouth, but you could use the small mouth. That's all you got. But now I've got this in, you recognize this as my 23 quart press, uh, pressure canner. I'm just using the bottom of it as a water bath canner. In other words, as a big boiler <laughs> to boil these in. I gotta have something deep enough so I can get an inch 
of head an inch of water over the top of these squash. So if you can see, that's what I've done. So you just fill it up, fill it up, and go at least an inch over your um, squash. Now, if, you, if you're watching it and you think, oh, my water's boiling away, keep your pan of boiling water over here to the side just in case you was to have to add to it when you start counting your clock. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to let this come to what we call a rolling boil. That's a full rolling boil, okay? And once it does that, then I'll set my clock. And because these are pints, I'm going to let them do that rolling boil for a full 10 minutes, okay? Now, I haven't uh, canned the quarts before, okay? I've only done the pints. But this old recipe that I got a hold of, if it was quarts, it'd be like 15 minutes. One person said 8 minutes and 12 minutes, but I'm doing 10 minutes for my pints, and if, if I was to do quarts, I'd do 15. But I don't have any wide mouth quart jars, okay? And I really like doing them in the wide mouth. Alrighty, we're just going to let them rip now, but don't set that clock on 10 minutes till after it comes to a full rolling bowl. Alright, look here, pull the lid back. There is a rolling bowl. It's going after it. Alright, I'm setting my clock. I've got a lid on this regular lid on my boiler. Really, it's the bottom of the bread pan. It's fine. Alrighty, setting my clock. I've, I always put one of these in the bottom of my canner. It keeps the jars from hitting the bottom, being up against the bottom. If you don't have one, you can take your jar rings, make you a circle, just as big as the bottom of your canner. Tie them together with like bread ties, something that can take the heat, wire, and you made you one. You won't have to hunt one of these. Okay? I just want to tell you that. They've been doing a rolling bowl for 10 minutes, and I took the lid off. Make sure you let the steam go away from you, because it will sure burn you when you lift the lid off. Now I'm pulling them out after they set for just a few minutes so I can get down in here without the steam being too rough on me. And I'm pulling them out and I'm going to let them set over here on the towel to cool. I hope I told y'all to always pour vinegar at the bottom of your canner. It kind of helps with the cloudy jars and clouding up your canner. And it just helps pour just a little bit. Or the cup, few tablespoons, something like that. Anyway, hair's mine, and I'm so proud. I'm sorry for the noise. I got noise. I got something else boiling over here. But uh, if you got any questions, you can comment down below. But right now, I'm gonna connect to this video, the video of how I fry these. Open up a can and fry them. Now it's time to open up a can and fry my squash. So here we go. Feel good one. <laughs> well, glory. All right, I'm gonna drain this. I drained it. This is here. It is trying to get all the water off of it. It's in really pretty good circles. Depend on you how how thick you make them. If you watch my other video where I show you how to cook my squash that's been in the freezer, you know that I do this paper towel trick. I get some paper towels and just to make sure, at that time I'm trying to make sure I get all the ice crystals off of it because it's been frozen. Well, this has been canned, so I'm just trying to make sure I get the extra water off of it. So I'm going to lay it out here on my paper towel, same as I do when I do my frozen squash. I'm telling you, preacher grew some really pretty squash this year. And I'm gonna just kind of roll it. Trying to get see it, how wet it is to get out the rest of the water. So there's the one I'm putting in there. I like the way this looks to you. <laughs> yeah. One lady on my other video said, could you get the water out with a salad spinner? I don't know. I don't have a salad spinner. See how the extra, even though I've been letting it drain. Now I rinsed this off, because if you remember it had the vinegar in it, because we was canning it, put the vinegar in it, you know, to raise the acid in the jar. So it would can, right? So I, when I put this to the sink in the colander, I added more water to wash off the 
Not only did I pour the water that was in the jar off, but I also rinsed it to get rid of a little bit of that vinegar taste. Nobody wants their fried squash to taste like vinegar. Now, Miss Joan, why do you do this when you already freeze it and cook it? Well, I like to have more and more things on my shelf, which I probably told you that. They don't require the deep freeze, don't require electricity. If something happens and tornado or whatever, your lights are out. you got stuff on the shelf that you can cook, okay? All right. One way or another. One more dry and you won't have it. Looks like. Some people put uh, meal on their squash. We don't. We just use uh, flour. Flour and salt and pepper. Here I go. Rolling it and trying to get some more water out of it. See how wet that is? Then I just drop it off in here. There it is. Oh. Hope I'm, I'm letting my grease all get hot over there. Hope I'm not letting it get too hot. Now, flour. I just kind of eyeball it. I'm, first, I'm going to put in like a half a cup. Shake it all over it. See any kind of flour works for this. I'm just coating it good. And put the lid on it. Well, pop, there it went. Just do a little dance. <laughs> shake, shake, shake. Oh, I'll tell you what, so far, this looks just like my other. Okay. Now we'll just do a little test here, see. This is a very old one. This last though. This is my mama. I'd say it's from the 50s or early 60s. Alright, now keep in mind now this is canned squash, right? With the recipe that I showed you earlier. Goodness, it's fine up faster than I did in there. I don't know if I had my grease real hot. Alright, now I'm going to put in a little bit of water. Just a little bit of water. Just a little bit of Sorry, I turn the bowl around backwards every time. For my viewers, I'm sorry. Left-handed. I'm throwing the rest of it. Now, I can do this in individual rings if I wanted to. It takes a little longer. If you like yours in individual rings, then you fry it that way. I try to get it all in here and get it fried. <laughs> all right. I think I better do some twisting and the turning here. I'm just going to run a spatula on down under here just to add and turn it just once. Because it did start browning some of it did really quick. I'll show you. Look at that. Isn't it All righty. I may put a little more salt and pepper. That's everybody's individual taste buds. Damn, I'm going to put the lid on this. I like to vent mine just a little bit. If I had it on an iron skillet or a regular skillet on the stove, I'd put a lid on it and I'd give it where it get just a little bit of air. Ten minutes, I'm going to give it a turn. Does that look good? Just going to spin it around, top to bottom. Swap them a little bit. Well, turn over there for me. See a shame. Ooh, that looks pretty, don't it? All right. Let's see how that looks. Turn it over there for me. Ooh, that looks pretty, don't it? I'm going to dip it out here on some paper towels. Look at that. <laughs> I use a, I've told you that before, a spatula with these slits in it and that holds some of the grease and let it drop out in the skillet. Less grease in my food. 
Well, well, what about that? You can can your squash and fry it. You don't have to be stewed and put into like a squash casserole or anything. You can fry it up. Come on, look. Give it some more salt and pepper just because we like a lot of pepper. Oh, this looks good. Got some black eyed peas and some slaw and meatloaf to cook this. Gonna be a pretty good supper. You can fry up your canned squash. And I wish you would subscribe and hit the thumbs up, the notification bell, all them things that people ask you to do. But here it is. You got it right here at home with Miss Joan. Okay, look at what a beautiful bounty of squash that Preacher brought in from his garden. Wait, this is the start. You got to start with that home, Miss Joan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm ready. I got to get up there. You can fire me as your photographer if you I want can. to. One videographer. These, one of these days, I'm going to fire find a better one. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's the proof. I'm gonna let it drain here a little bit on this paper towel. Hope oh, I gotta finish it. Mm -hmm. 